Hey YouTube! Hey YouTube! So, I'm going to try and do the stage series video, kind of documentary, everything I know about them. Um, I'm going to play, play for two seconds first there. So, Washburn Stage Series, that's this shape, which kind of looks a bit like a explorer -y, thunderbird -y type thing. Um, so th this is the first one I bought, it kind of got me in. This is what started me off with all the mad Japanese guitars that I've got tons of. Uh, but I suppose you start off with Washburn, which I've talked about before. They're kind of old company from this 1876, I think, actually. Um, used to make acoustic guitars and mandolins and banjos and stuff and then they stopped during the war and then in the 70s they got bought over by a couple of folk and they started making electric guitars, first electric guitars. So they went to a company called Yamaki in Japan who made domestic guitars. They were owned by uh, two brothers. One of them was a musician -y type person or a luthier and the other one was a business -y type person. And they made the Washburn Wing series, which are these, starting in about 1977, 78. This one here is a 79 Hawk. But uh, quite high spec guitars for what they are. So there's this one and the Falcon. Uh, the reason I've got this one out because I had the Falcon out recently or six months ago. So this one is, so you've got a hand carved top basically handmade there was only 30 people ever worked at yamaki uh, it's through neck you can't really see because it's been colored in but um through neck so you get a big scoop things like wooden truss rod cover through stringing uh got its own washburn branded tuners um let's say this is the sort of basic one you've got this bridge which is called a harmonic lock which has brass saddles you saw it was through strung also it clamps here and here to make it super solid these pickups are Ibanez Super 70s. They're called Washburn Power Sustain, but they're made apart according to the guy who I said there was two brothers, one of their sons. So it'd be his dad and his uncle owned it. Um, I'm sort of in contact. There's a couple of Facebook pages. One I run called Washburn. Oh, this is a heavy thing when you're carrying two of them. Anyway, I wanted to show you this just to see where it all started. So this is 1979, this one, but it's at a 70 seven maybe 78 79 but 79 they were making them they just kind of finalized the design the slightly early ones have got some slightly different things slightly different pickups the output jacks on the front small differences uh, so it's got a wooden truss rod cover as well so these were doing awful well uh getting used by some famous folk uh you know, on, on, on my i'll put the links to these down below there's a page called the day on D A I O N, Dion, Dion. I can't remember how you're meant to pronounce it. I know I, I was told I pronounced it wrong. So I think it's Dion. They uh, were a Yamaki home make, but they got the Washburn contract. So they were making these guitars for a couple of years, used by most notably uh, Mick Moody from White Snake and Mick Box from Uriah Heap. Also, whoever was playing guitar in Mike Oldfield. There's lots of this stuff on the Washburn Guitars Golden Era page, which I started up because I couldn't really find anything out about these. I had this for years and I had the internet. I just couldn't really find anyone else. You could find the occasional picture, but didn't know anything about it. So 
the rest of my information I'm starting this off with information from a magazine that I borrowed which I've now uh, is no longer hold on which I got off my pal James who's also a Washburn fan and I scanned some of the images from it um so I know that these came out in um, the stage series the magazine I've got here which I currently can't quite find the I'll give me two seconds if I was clever I'd put it on the screen but it's on the wrong computer it's on my laptop instead um there so th this magazine was from October 1980 And in it, there's an advert for a place called The Rock Shop in Chalk Farm Road, London. And in it, it mentions, they're, they're obviously a, a Washburn dealer, like an early on one. I can do that, yep. And uh, so, in it, Ace American Designs, exclusively produced by Washburn, Mick Moody, White Snake, Mick Berkshire, we've proved these access to the top league, both in the studio and the stage. The Washburn range includes 11 different models, send 25 pence in stamps and to get a colour catalogue. Totally would do that if I could. Um, that didn't look like 11. Really. So that you get a raven, which is... The, the, there's, there's a wing series, is the raven, hawk, falcon and eagle, which I'll do another video on. And the new stage. And then the new stage with vibrato. And then the new stage EL12 string. And then the new stage bass. And then the new 8 string bass. This would be the new 8 string bass. Um, so basically at the start although it says A or this one says B20 8, 8 for the 8 string um, there was only one and it was this spec so that this is the bass one I'm, I'm using this one because it's my favourite guitar ever if I had to play one but uh, also this is the sort of standard model so you've got a tiger stripe maple top you've got Ebony fingerboard, brass nut, um, brass ring inlays on the fingerboard, which are really cool, and I've never seen anyone else manage to do it apart from the original Washburns. Um, well, this is the guitar version. This is the bass version of it, obviously. And if you look on the back, look at the the, the quality of the ash. Just to look at I me, mean, look at that piece of wood there. I don't know why they covered that up with a thing on the front. But that just looks absolutely nuts as you can see it's through neck as well three piece through neck this also has a I'm, I, I keep calling it a toblerone neck it's got a very deep v neck on it which is very nice as you can see this the eight string bass version has uh, the thin strings tuned from here so it's like an eight string it is an eight string bass but it's like a 12 string guitar so you've just got the four strings and then four octave strings above it the octave strings all tuned from tuners down here and then um, then they're through strung on the headstock like so also i mentioned there there's a 12 string which is basically the guitar version like this it's got six tuners down here for the thin strings and then six tuners up at the top beautiful machines right so the first guitar is this one which is the a20 which this this one is black um this is the a20 v because it's got a strat type tremolo this one doesn't have a serial number on it but i'm putting it at very early so 79 1980 something like that for the 20 series and as i said all the things i mentioned there are intact here uh, apart from this has power sustained pickups the same ones that were in the hawk there um and it's also got push pull coil defeats they call them which is cool because that's what they actually are people always call them coil taps they're not the correct name is coil split but i like coil defeat better because that's what they say in this so this is um and the same again it's through neck even though you can't see it because it's been painted black um i didn't mention these are also wooden trust uh, cavity covers on the back but uh one of these appeared on my on the washburn golden era page and there was japanese writing on the back of this cavity cover and uh, we got the guy the, the, the son i was talking about earlier on who, whose first job was working for yamaki um to translate it and it translated as ship wood paint black so theory there being they all look like this and then some of them maybe weren't quite as fancy as this maybe you got one that had a quite a horrible grain or something by the time they'd sanded it down paint it black um, it's also got uh, 
fancy binding. It's got like a gold binding and then black on the outside. So it's like a two ply binding, but it's gold and black, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that was uh, the reason I, I looked up this magazine because that's basically what these are all new in October 1980. So I can now put this away. Oh, that's actually, <laughs> I had to move the. You can see I'm, I'm actually able to hold this. It's, I've, I've moved the, the, the strap button from. The, I just keep hitting it off things, really. Yeah, so I moved the strap button down here so it balanced. Uh, it just made it easier. Um, let's be honest, it is quite neck heavy, the base version. So there's a B20, which is this, apart from it's got like a, a more normal bridge. It's kind of, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's a, like a, it's a brass blocked bridge, kind of like a P-base type thing. And obviously, and then you can get it in the, I think you can get it with just a P-base pickup and you can get it with the P and the J. Um, yes, so I love these things. They're amazing. So that, that's basically kind of where they started from. Um, it was that uh, Hero Sands, his name was the guy that designed these. I spe especially like the hockey type headstock because it kind of matches this bit. They do sit rather well. well. It sits really well when you move the strap button on the eight string base, but it's an eight string base. So what, what can you expect from that? Um, so they just built the one the, the one model and then if you look up uh, matsumoku.org on the internet you'll find a couple of catalogues sort of even though I've just put it, tip, dip it in the bud right now Matsumoku never built a washburn guitar I do love Matsumoku guitars I've got a few of them um, but they never made a washburn guitars these were made by a company called Yamaki and Yamaki went under in 1982 and a half 1983 somewhere around about then what happened was the the wing series and these were very expensive to make so the bean counters came in and then they decided that why why are we making such amazing guitars and not selling them for that much money because i mean i suppose going back in a bit of history when you, when you get to the sort of mid 70s um gibson and fender weren't doing particularly well they were really really scaling back how good their guitars were to absolutely maximize how much money they could make from them so you know they were not quite plywood but getting that way i mean nowadays the 70s and 80s gibsons are you, you do get they're worth some money but if you go back 10 years or 20 years they were just thought of as shite uh, <laughs> so what japan were doing was they were now coming in going like that rather than they started making copies of them and um copies of Les Pauls and Strats and Tellys were kind of actually better than what Fender and Gibson were doing so they weren't happy about it so lawsuits flew about and then I think it was mainly Ibanez and Aria decided uh, Ibanez being Fuji Gen mo mostly and Aria being Matsumoku mostly they said they would make their own designs so then you get your Ibanez artist the Aria PE and the Washburn wing series which are basically designed to be the best guitar in the world. Um, and they did really well for a couple of years. If you look on, I'm actually looking there, there's a UFO, We Belong to the Night. If you look that up, actually the three guys have got a guitarist who's closest to the picture. I'm sorry, I don't know who these folk are. Is playing a red A10. Guy in the middle is playing a B20 single. That's the Pete Way, I think, actually, isn't it? And then the guy on the other side is playing a blue A20. A20. So the... The guy in the red must be the rhythm guitarist because he only get the, the 10 series. But if you look up that matsumoku.org, who never made them, but they do have uh, some of the catalogues. The, it must be from after that magazine. So maybe 1981, there are now, there's now a, a 10, an E10, which is this one in the range, which is not neck through anymore apparently it just says set neck but if you look at the actual neck join it looks exactly the same still got the wooden cavity covers um still got the same power sustain super 70 pickups basically Damasio super distortions same bridge it doesn't no longer has a coil defeats and it's now got a rosewood fingerboard and, and it's just and it's actually got mother of pearl inlays which i noticed the other night which i'd never really noticed before because mostly you get Perloid, I think they call it. Um, so it's like plastic that looks like Mother of Pearl. I'm pretty sure that's real Mother of Pearl in this one. Um, it's a stunning guitar. Again, this one doesn't have a serial number. Norm normally the serial number is written here. And sometimes it's really easy. Like apart from at the very start, by the time you get to... Well, I'm not really... 
that there's, there's a few conflicting things going on about it. But it's quite nice when they just start with uh, 79 <laughs> or 80, 81, 82. I've definitely got guitars. That's the serial number. just starts with that. And you know, oh, it starts with 79. It's a 1979 one. This one does actually have a serial number, which I was totally adamant it didn't have. But it's so uh, badly... <laughs> It's black against this crazy thing, and you just totally can't see it. It is there, though. Like, there's, there's absolutely zero percent chance of seeing it in the video. The serial number. This has got the annoyingly got the other type of serial. It's, it looks like it starts one six or one eight. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't actually know the date. I don't know the date of this one. I don't know the date of the black A twenty, and I don't know the the date of the blue A ten. I'm thinking about 1980 because they're quite early on. They don't have serial numbers. Uh, so at that point, there was they, they introduced the A10, and then a couple of years later, I think 1983, they came out with the A5 and the A15. The A5 is this red one here, which I did a video for the other day actually. Uh, this is, I suppose, this this is the budget model. So gone is the binding. Um, it's also now got a Telecaster control plate which means that they don't need to route it for this anymore. Um, it's still got the same harmonic lock bridge. It's a bolt-on neck. Incidentally, this has still got the, the, the deep V neck profile. All the ones I've got have got the deep V neck on it. So it's got a maple neck and a maple fingerboard. Same tuners. I was going to say it doesn't have the cab the wooden cavity covers in the back. That's because it doesn't have any cavity covers in the back. Um, love this guitar. So they made this. By this, this is 83. So by this point, Yamaki had gone under. Apparently there was a there was a, a huge family problem, a, a huge family fight which they don't talk about, so it's very hard to get any information. None of this stuff's online, by the way. Um, and uh, so, 1982, Washburn weren't happy with the amount of guitars they were making. They weren't making enough. There was only 30 of them, 30 folk in the in the factory, and they were churning them out in sort of groups of 20 or 30 at a time. So, there's quite a lot of different colours and sort of strange shapes of it it's not like nowadays where you you know it's like oh oh what you want to release one with a tremolo right we'll have to retool everything you know and put them out in batches of ten thousand or whatever it is no these are in batches of 30 so to actually to put a tremolo on it wasn't that difficult because they were practically handmade it was just a case of, all right before they get painted i oh, will paint you know, we'll paint half a dozen of them white half a dozen of them black or whatever um or paint the ones that don't have good grain black or solid colors is how it goes. Uh, yeah, so that's the A5. That mine's in '83, the first year of these. So by this point, as I was saying, I'm not, I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to put it. Out. Um, so as I was saying, the Westburn weren't happy with the amount of guitars they were producing. They couldn't keep up the orders. The orders were just pure ridiculous. There's something like they were able to produce a thousand, was it a thousand instruments a month? A, so somewhere it's worked out that there's 30,000 washburns all in and that includes all the stage, all the wing, all the force and all the acoustics. But if you look at it in a run, it's not very many. It might be 3,000. I can't remember. I'm not going to edit this. I'm going to keep it in and make it work. There's not very many of them. Not when you compare it to how many guitars, I don't know, like, I don't know how many Les Pauls did Gibson sell a year? You know what I mean? It, I looked it up, I think it's half a million or something like that, you know, and there's like, there's nothing like that. That's for one year, not all in for the whole the whole series. So what they were doing was, they, in order to make more guitars to try and fill out the orders, because they just couldn't keep up with the orders, they reduced the spec of them. So they made them cheaper and they didn't. And uh, what happened was they sent a container load over to America and something went wrong where they all the necks bent or something like that or it was lost, or there was, there was some problem with this container load, and basically, because that container load was binned, Yamaki just folded because they didn't have the money to cover it, um, and that was it. So it, they then moved on to a company called Chushin, who were an, another another big company like Matsumoku, very similar. They made quite a lot of, a lot of guitars you see are made by Chushin, even though people say they're Matsumoku. Um, there's a lot of Vantages and Grecos, and all, all these things made by Chushin. Um, so they kind of finished off what was left from the Yamaki when it closed down. I think that's maybe where this came from. 
because this is the A5, which I said was like a Telecaster. Well, in the, the, most of these have two single coil pickups. And I think what they were doing was they were using up old parts. So they, rather than buy single coil pickups, we've got a container of the not the, of the original pickups, the power sustains. So that's why it's got them. There was also, at the same time as the A5 came out, there was an A15, which is not so much like the A5, it's more like the A10. So you've got the set neck, the binding. It was, I think they came with a, a tremolo most often, uh, but it's got three single coil pickups and a scratch plate, kind of like a strat. Also, the, the bridges, although that, the black one that you see has a, a, a strat type bridge, Later on, they came out with this bridge. Um, it's a four series, so it's kind of it's like a two point brass saddled thing. Um, this is a guitar that was owned by Onslow from Keeping It Keeping Up Appearances. That's a, a, another range which I want to do a video on as well because I've now got quite a lot of them. Yeah, so that's and what they were doing for tuition were finishing off um, the the last of the Yamaki stuff because I think they just. Basically, it was just one morning they went in, and it was like, sorry, you're all sacked, and there was guitars half getting built, and you know, body blanks and parts and all that stuff, all went to tuition, and they started finishing them off. So there's quite a lot of odd guitars come out in that era. Um, I haven't mentioned the fact I've got a white. That one's 82, because it's actually got a serial number on it. Um, I got it in a terrible state. I didn't fit the color. It's, it's, it, 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 originally, I've just had a, 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 a the hardtail bridge. And I put go to pickups on it because it had single coils in it or um, P90 humbucker sized P90s, cheapy ones in it, which is I didn't think it wanted P90s. Um, yeah, and then so we're now in sort of 83 for 83, would we think Yamaki was gone by this point? 84 Tushin, they started building their own ones, um, and they came out with a range which were very popular, uh, the BBR series, which were black. Everything black apart from it had red binding on the body, red binding on the neck, a red washburn logo, and it gone was this. The way, the way you can really tell them is this um, heelless neck joint thing, which, okay, this is the neck through one, but the A10's got it. It's a set neck. It became more like a Les Paul, you know, you get the step. So that's how you can tell the Tushin ones, and all the BBR ones are like that. Um, and there was, by that time, in the UK, we did get the BBR ones, apparently. This is a, a, obviously not my era, but I'm just looking back. We don't see... We see some of the BBRs. There's a, a famous one called a Tour 24, which is like a Telecaster, which you actually see. When I say often, I mean... You don't see what You don't see one every year on eBay, but I've seen them. But they did a lot of... Um, I think maybe the distributor for the UK and Europe stopped or did something different so there are, there are other japanese made by the by the in the tushin factory washburns that went on till 1987 i think there's one called an hm which is like even spikier than this and a few other and a flying v models like that which we never i don't know if we never really got them but the nothing like in the numbers where we got the original yamaki ones um the the yamaki ones are superior uh the tushin ones it was like when they got to that era that there have been a bit more price conscious not no expense spared which is what these are these are no expense spared if this was new i the price would be through the roof um they wouldn't, they wouldn't sell because they would be so expensive um if you can find them and it's like people saying to me before it's like oh, they're quite rare and i was like oh, they're not that rare i mean i've seen like half a dozen and it's like oh. kind of bought four of that half dozen i've seen um you do occasionally see them the one i, I, I didn't buy there was a pink one from a uh, Howard Lease, who is Hearts Hearts were a, a, a featured artist as well. So Howard Lease had his own eight stage series, and it was sort of pink, like a, a really girly pink. And it had Hearts as fret markers. Never seen one of them in real life, uh, but I did see a pink one. So this the 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 A ten, the blue one there came in pink. And that was the one I kind of quite fancied that. But I also saw, I remember one I didn't buy, which I kind of really regretted, was an A20. This is about three or four years ago. And it was white. So it was it was white like that, but it was white with white binding. And it was a 20. That's a 10. Um, and I, it just went too expensive for me. It went over my limit. Um, it would have been lovely, though. But it all worked out quite nicely because six, six months ago I got the black A20. So I've now got almost 
the full range of the ones I want. Um, the 15 is pretty ugly with the scratch plate, so I wouldn't be super. I'd like one. If I can find one at the right price, maybe a beat up one. Um, and then the B20, this is the, the eight string version. One of these actually went last week on eBay that I was looking at and it went for like 500 quid. It was one of those people, someone didn't know what they had. Um, so it was on and it finished it. You know, it was like half two in the afternoon on a Thursday or something like that. And it's like, or, or it was a, a 99 pound starting thing. And it's like, that's not how you sell things on eBay. You make them finish at seven o'clock at night or Sunday so that lots of people can see it and then bid against each other. Whereas half two on a Thursday, it's not even lunchtime, you know, people are at work, don't have time to do that. Um, that's when I like to buy my guitars if I can, but if I see, I'm looking at something, you know, especially if it's got like a, you know, like a hundred pound start or something like that, or even a 99p start, I'll look at it and be like, oh, when's it ending? It's like, oh, Sunday night. Other people will see that. Whereas if it's like, pure, oh, Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> There's a chance that nobody's going to see that or they'll forget about it. Um, Yeah, so the stage tunes, as I said, the stage tunes are on a little bit. There's some Washburn catalogs you can find online if you look. Washburn, the company now, has no idea about these things. Um, all, all the records are gone. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I know it sounds silly just now, but when actually I was watching an interview with Paul McCartney and he was saying that it was like, it was 1964 or something like that. So the Beatles had been about for two years. And that period, yeah, it was that period, yeah, we're, we're doing the work and we're, we're trying to do some publishing, you know, so we can get some because you didn't get long lasting bands then. So we're like, we maybe get another three or four years out of this band and it'll be great before we're not popular anymore because that's before that, that's what people, they had hits for two years and then the next fad came in. It wasn't a thing that people would be still listening to rock and roll music 50, 60 years later. And um, same with guitars, they didn't, I don't think they were aware that people like me would be like, you're drooling over these things 40 years after they were made. Uh, it was just a case I would just build guitars. Um, but I mean, really, to be honest, the thing that blows me away with these mostly is the, the quality of them. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I bought this thing. Because I, I, I saw it hanging up in, um, it was at a, in a guitar shop in town, second hand. Was like, and I'd just seen John Paul Jones it's like a, a few months before. I'd never seen an eight-string bass. I was like, an eight-string bass? I just thought, look, that looks pure amazing. Wow. And uh, I, I, just, I can't afford that. I was like, that's going to be thousands of pounds. So I went home and I was talking to my pal. I was like, yeah, that eight-string bass looked amazing then. It's up here, yeah. I was like, I pay it. was 1,300 quid. And he was like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't 1,300. It was 300 quid. I was like, no, it was 1,300. Wasn't it? Was it not neck through? He was like, I don't, I don't know. So I phoned up the shop. I was like, you've got a, a washburn eight-string bass. You tell me how much that costs. Just did it in the second-hand bit. I was like, up here, yeah, I think it was 249, actually. And I was up here, what? So I drove immediately. I just drove straight back into town, put a, a deposit on it. And it was like, then when I started looking at it and just going, what the hell? I mean, how, look at, the, look at that. I mean, if I, and it's like, you know, un, unnecessary amazingness, you know, matching wooden covers. It's like, what? And then the V-neck and ebony and brass rings and everything, just like everything on it just screams, this is the most expensive thing we could possibly think of. Um, and then, so that was, that was me. And then it was like, for a couple of years, this is when I, I couldn't afford the guitars I wanted, so I was building the ones I wanted. You know, I built a double neck, I built a Telecaster uh, using bits, um, because I just assumed, like a lot of people I think still do, that you had to buy a guitar if you wanted it to be a good, it had to be 500 quid, do you know what I mean? It just has to be, like, for, for the basic, well, my Gibson SG, that sort of thing. I bought a beat up one, but um, it was like that. So if you, you started off with a crap guitar, you know, 100 pound or whatever, and then once you were in a band, you had to buy like an Epiphone or something like that, like a 250 pound guitar to get one that was good enough to play in a rehearsal room. And then if you were going to be gigging, you had to get like a Gibson. That's the way we always think about these things. Hold on two seconds. Um, yeah, don't phone back again. Um, and then it wasn't, it was a couple of years after that, I bought a Hondo Telecaster for 30 quid in cash converters. It was really good and it was like this is as good as and then I started dawning on me that actually there's all these mad guitars that exist that nobody knows what they are now there's idiots like me on the internet showing you what they are so you, now people would know what it is but if, when I first got this there was no information about it um 
nobody knew what they were because now you get somebody you go like that oh, it's fucking uh, play Gibson custom shops and stuff and it's like I don't remember um, so I'll probably have a wee a wee bit of a I'll stick something in have a jam it's been half an hour it's not as long as I thought it was going to be um, not as professional as I was hoping it was going to be either get kicked kind of away though by playing through the I'm playing through the bass amp and clean and then guitar amp with a fuzz pedal on it. Stupid now and pick up the blue. I should have cleaned this guitar up. This hasn't been played in six months. Um, 
strings are a bit crunchy. Yeah, so Washburn Stage Series are amazing if you can get them. I've not even finished yet. They reissued them uh, in the early 90s, made by Samick and Korea. You can tell those ones by the fact they've quite often got a Floyd Rose on it. The original ones never came with a Floyd Rose. Never came with a Calor either. Um, that's been retrofitted. In the later 80s for the Tushin ones, you could get it with a Wonder Bar, which is kind of like a Calor, apart from it. The whole thing with the Wonder Bar was you could fit it to the top of a guitar without having to route it. So it's kind of built on the surface. Actually, not entirely unlike that Floyd Rose FRX I've fitted a couple of in the last couple of weeks. Um, so they got reissued in the 90s, you can tell them, because instead of having that logo on the headstock, they've got a, like a script logo. And I think, to be honest, even in below that, it says reissue series. And I think the headstock's a slightly different shape. Also, in the later on again from that, Washburn started getting made in America. There's a lot of people thought Washburn were, were made in America um, because they were an American company. But they weren't up until... I think it's about the mid nineties. There was an American range, an American company, but uh, there was an American range for. Uh, and there's a picture of Michelangelo Batio, you know, the guy who can play the four neck guitar. He's actually pretty funny if you ever look him up on YouTube. Um, he's a bit. Uh, I don't want to say he's a bit insane, but he's kind of he's really funny. Funny. He kind of talks to his hand. You know, like if someone says that, like, but you can't put a Floyd Rose. He does that, and it's like you kind of watch it like what. Good. Worth looking up. He had an A30, which was basically this shape again, but made in America, and I think it probably the Floyd was on it as well. Um, but remarkably good guitars if you can find one. Um, like it's kind of like the A Team a bit. If you can find them, then they're they're, they're definitely worth a look at. Also, I, I forgot to mention. I'll go back to things I forgot to mention now. When they stopped making them in Yamaki. Um, as I said, some of them were left over and built by Tushin for 83. By the time it got to 84 and 85 and 86, they moved some stuff about. They no longer had the, the deep V necks on them. They had a much more normal, just a C-section, C you know, like a, a, a C neck on them rather than the V. And also, there was a point when this, this pickup switch moved to here. Don't see very many of them here because, as I said, I think there was something funny about the distributor for the UK they kind of more went to America. I think they hit America a bit harder. Um, after that, I think the, the Yamaki ones are relatively rare in America. Than the, and then the later on ones, they started getting famous. But um, they were all over the place. I mean, it's a... I don't know what it was they did wrong, Washburn. Um, they did... They were doing really well. I mean, if you see if you watch Top of the Pops, like I've been watching, you know, the Top of the Pops, um, it shows you like the years. It's like Top of the Pops 78. It shows you what was the the top of the pops was on it was a British TV show it used to be on every week where it showed you the top 40 and it had I don't know half a dozen folk performing maybe not so much the, the stage scenes but definitely the Tour 24 and the wings all over the place used by lots of people uh, the Vapors turning Japanese using a wing uh, as I said Mike Oldfield doing his 1980 concerts the rhythm guitarist uh, the second guitarist using a wing um, John Fogarty got one in a pawn shop it's a wing though this is this is this the stage thing but they did they, they do pop up and as i said that that ufo thing where i think the washburn rep might have just been talking to them just before it where they've got the whole band playing them <laughs> it's just like so I don't, I don't actually have any of the ones they've got because the one that he's got you can see when it zooms in on when he's playing a solo he's got the brass ring inserts so the the a20 was available in blue and the the rhythm guitarist there is playing a red a10 which is this model um some of them have got white pickups like the cream demarzio pickups which you know you know you now can't get you, can, you can't buy copies of these unless you buy demarzios because demarzio own the copyright for the hex pole um cream colored pickups so you, nobody that's why if you've got i'll oh, just get you know get a warman or a, a wilkinson they're not allowed to make them we've got a copyright restriction on them also the thing you can tell whether you've got demarzio super distortions or not is um if you've got your Allen key set, these are metric, because they're Japanese. Uh, whereas if it's DiMarzio made in America, it'll have imperial sized poles. So you get your Allen key out, whatever one fits best. Right, so I've got to talk for 40 minutes. I maybe didn't do this as well as I thought it was going to be. 
I've been looking forward to it. I just kind of, kind of, kind of in the mood. So maybe I'll maybe do an, an an extended jam video or something like that where I'll try and use all of them. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So I'll, I'll maybe do a jam with five of them, just like I'll kind of link between them, and I'll probably pause it between the bits just to try and just so I can use five stage at the same time. Because to be honest, I'm not sure how many other people will have five of these things. Um, really, uh, I do fix guitars, by the way, and I'm. A, bit passionate about such things so okay this one was working that I, I told you i got that one for 250 quid because i didn't know what it was and nobody wants an eight string bass the the four string basses i saw a yellow one once it looked amazing it went for 900 quid like the uh, not 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 the eight string version just the actual bass version but i'm classing that as counting the eight string and the uh, thing and if you if you see the the 12 string one which they they definitely made more than a couple of them i've seen a couple of them the six strings there the problem is 12 string guitars in general this it's they're, they're always a pig to string and the strings go rusty dead quickly because they're dead thin so you having a pig time tuning them changing the strings and then a month later they've gone all rusty and it's like it's annoying so i'm not a nowadays you just buy a pedal it does 12 string if you really want it um yeah, so they were all, I mean, I, I didn't pay what they should have been for these. I kind of paid, I don't know, I got the whole set for less than the cheapest Les Paul you could find, second hand. Something like that. And every one of them, miles better than a Les Paul. I like, I like being controversial. I keep annoying folk. Folk get annoyed. I'm here, oh, that's my favourite guitar. How dare you say that that piece of crap washburn's better than it? I was like, well, I played both of them. <laughs> and it's like, which one did I keep? Rock on. Love y'all.